This week, there's no messing about. We're straight to work and under strict instructions. Mel wants land and life in the hills, but is it a step too far for partner Ali? But what's in it for her? Him? Just that? This week, we're in the Welsh borders, hunting for a home in the hills. But can leadership trainer Mal and air hostess Ali turn their dream into a reality? Sacrifice, compromise and work as a team. More to the point, can we? This search is all about leadership and there's one thing leading Mal. At 45 years old now, I, it's about time I stop mucking about. You can't say it clearer than that. Well, apart from the words mid-life crisis. For the last 15 years, Mel's been dreaming of leaving suburbia and setting up his own leadership and team building centre in the Welsh hills. He's thinking tunnel challenges, rope climbing, assault courses. Working as a freelance trainer, Mel's got the theories, the books and all the marker board colours they make. But his office at the end of the garden is no longer doing it for him. The great outdoors is calling. The trouble is, suburban living has been perfect for Ali. She's an air hostess, so living 30 minutes from Heathrow is ideal. A normal day for me could be going to New York, Washington, San Francisco, Hong Kong, Miami. So I might be living in the Welsh borders, which will be a complete contrast. Quite interesting. Do I sound convincing enough? <laughs> Not really, no. But this hasn't stopped them selling their three-bedroom maidenhead semi. In the six years they've owned it, Ali's lovingly done it up and it's increased a very healthy £200,000 in value. They accepted an offer for £415,000 two weeks ago, so now it's time to follow Mel's rural dream. The Welsh borders are undeniably beautiful, but at the moment they are also undeniably cold and wet, so even I needed some convincing to get on the road with Phil. I hope you're not going to tell me that you're planning on moving the business to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I do understand a little bit about what he's going through. I mean, with our business, there was a stage that either we had to continue as is or take the plunge and expand and take on risk, which is essentially what he's doing. Yeah, but he's not just taking on risks. He's taking everybody with him. Yeah. He's basically saying to Ali, I'm off to Wales. Come if you want, don't if you don't. Kind of all or nothing. Well, if that's how this works, we'd better get started. I'm meeting Mel in the town of Monmouth to get his side of the story. Apart from the business, what else do you want on a personal level from this move? Ideally, I'd like to be right in the middle of the hills because I love hills. I love hill okay. walking. I'd like to be able to go out the doorstep and just go for walks on hills or runs or whatever. Why now? I'm at a certain age now where it's, it's the thing I've got to do. Right. If okay. I don't do it, then I, I will carry on as I am right. and, and I will die wondering. Okie doke. I've, I've got to ask, Mel's not having some kind of midlife crisis, is he? Quite possibly, quite possibly. <laughs> I actually never really truly believed it would happen, mm. but it has, so I've just got to get on with it. Mm -hmm. I do love the countryside and I can't see how anyone could fail to say this isn't absolutely stunning. But living but, here... Yeah, that's... I mean, we're not talking the old weekend. No, I know, and that's what I'm struggling with at the moment. It's, um, it's a very long way from friends and family. Well, we'd better get to it. If we don't get this right for him now, he's never going to set the business up. It really is now or never. But what's in it for her? Him? Just that? Uh, it adds yes. two and a half hours minimum to her commute at the end of a working stint. She's giving up a lot. A lot. Curse to you, old cynic. It's not all about travel times. It's about two people wanting to be together. Give me strength. Their top budget is 600 grand for a detached three-bedroomed house. Mel needs a minimum of four acres with some flat land for some of the team building courses. Outbuildings are a bonus. Flat land in the Welsh hills? Maybe a little lesson on geology here? We've two different agendas. The land needs to be ideal for Mel, but only the perfect house will convince Ali to make that move. And whatever the gradient, around here, acres come at a premium. It's real working farmland, and we're competing against others looking for new business opportunities. This may force the house into second place, which won't suit Ali. We may have 600 grand in the pot, but this is a sought-after area. I've got high hopes for our first property. 
Mel wants to live in the hills and this could be his spectacular daily view. It's on a hillside 20 miles from Monmouth overlooking the entire area. Ali may have reservations about leaving Maidenhead, but I don't think this location can fail to seduce her. When Kirsty and I first came up here, we both kind of looked at each other on the way up. It feels like we're at the top of the world. It really does. This big climb up. This house is in immaculate condition. Refurbished by its current owners with fantastic attention to detail, it's got all the charm and style of Mel and Ali's Maidenhead home, but bags more room and plenty of scope for entertaining. Outside, there are six acres of well-maintained land. Though it may be hilly, Phil has a plan to make it more suitable for Mel's outdoor activities. On the market for £590,000, I think this place has a lot to offer. Come through here, you've got a fantastic room. That's brilliant. It takes in all the views and everything, isn't it? It's incredibly neutrally decorated. Yeah. There's really nothing in this house you couldn't like. How does it strike you so far from the inside? It's a bungalow. It is a bungalow. I hadn't thought of that. Is a bungalow a problem? Uh, yeah, we're not quite ready to go into a bungalow. Oh, really. dear. Ooh. Ooh, early slip-up. <laughs> well, that may have blown it for the house, but could opportunities with the land swing it? Basically, we've got six acres that come with this house, and it's this paddock and this paddock. The, the top paddock here could be levelled off to almost completely level. We could level this paddock off. My concern, our house is just there if we live here, mm -hmm. and this is where we'd be running the business. So the idea was that we'd have land where the house actually isn't on show. It doesn't do it for me, and it, you know, if I was charging someone money to come in here, I don't think it would do it for them. While Mel's certainly not mincing his words, there are clearly other worries on his mind. The business is important, and you know, <laughs> in reality, Ali's got to live here, and she doesn't really want to come down here. I'm interested to know, with this move, what's in it for you? Um, I don't know at the moment. <laughs> uh, no, in what's in it for me? We'll get to live in a slightly bigger house with stunning views, the feeling of being in the countryside and uh, just a, probably a slower pace of life. Yeah. So You don't sound entirely convinced. Well, I do still have reservations, to be perfectly honest, but you don't actually try, do you? There's nothing like a first viewing to put everything into perspective. How did it go on the land? To be honest, it went really badly. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to look at the land from the house. Oh, for God's sake, another thing on the list. So, really, the business area needs to be behind the house, away from the house. This isn't going well at all, not one little tiny piece. In best team leader fashion, I'm prepared to face this head on. What have we learned? in this first viewing. We need level land. We need some really areas level. of level land. Yeah. Uh, we're in the wrong part of the country. <laughs> we're in the wrong part of the country. <laughs> well, you can get level land on top of the hill. Okay. It's not that much of a problem. We need a stronger house, same amount of accommodation. Location is not going to sell you on a property unless it's got the other factors. OK, right, well, we can learn that lesson and move on. <laughs> Textbook performance, Kirsty. I'm loving your work. Our next property is in the village of Langaran, just 10 miles away. This stone-built two-storey house dates back to the 18th century. It's closer to Monmouth, so we're in a less remote spot. And into flatter landscape. On the market for 630,000, this place is strong on all counts. Very nice. This is looking more promising already. This yeah. looks good. This four-bedroom house is packed with character and has fantastic proportions. Obviously loved as a family home, it now needs some attention. Though it's £30,000 over budget, there's always a deal to be done, and I think it's an excellent opportunity for Ali to make her mark. The outbuildings that come with the land are almost as extensive as the house itself, and along with the four and a half acres, I think Mel will be buzzing with the business potential. Now, I know you weren't really looking for a vegetable garden, but you've got one here, whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, well, I think I'm, that might become a swimming pool. <laughs> big plans, Mel. <laughs> the current owner has sheep grazing on the land, but unlike many properties in this area, you are not obliged to continue using this land for agriculture. This gives Mel plenty of flexibility for the business. She could be um, kind of self-sufficient here, and that's the first of two paddocks. Brilliant. Flat enough for you? It's almost perfect. Say that again? It's almost perfect. That's <laughs> now, obviously, this is a much more traditional type kitchen. 
Yeah. But actually, it's a really nice kitchen. Yeah, it's a good size. Funnily enough. Yeah. How long do you see yourself staying in the house that you're looking for? Forever. That is, the idea is this is the last move for us. We just wouldn't be able to afford to do it again. So it's got to be right. So this yeah. is everything? Yeah. The rest of your life? Well, as, as far as you can say that, yeah. You're sounding as though this would really work. Obviously, I haven't seen the house yet. But... No. Well, I don't need to. That's Ali's domain. For me, that's part of the deal. If her supporting me and coming down this way and doing this thing, um, as I've said to you before, she, she's a... got to feel comfortable. It's a big move for her. It's a huge move for her. Right. So it's Ali's job to choose the house. And it's my job to enable her to see the potential of this one. It's a really good guest bedroom. I mean, you've talked about being away from your friends and family. Yes. Do you envisage having a lot of people to stay? I do hope so. Please come and see us. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be the idea. There's no denying this is a really strong property, but it is 30 grand over budget. How'd it go outside? Fantastic. Oh, thumbs up. Perfect. Two thumbs up. Both thumbs up. It's perfect. Perfect. And the house? Really good. Is the budget still concerns me slightly on this yeah. one? So it will come down to the money at the end of the day. Yeah. But what an opportunity. Yeah. It's a general thumbs up. That's a nice way to end a day. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thanks. It may seem like we're on a roll, but things can go downhill very fast in Wales, and I don't think even Superman can save us. Mel and Ali have basically said, if we can't find them what they're looking for, they're going to give up the dream, they're going to abandon it. This week, we're in the Welsh borders, wondering who's wearing the trousers. Mel may well be a leadership trainer, but is Ali taking instruction? With their maidenhead home under offer and a budget of £600,000, Ali's agreed to leave suburban life to follow Mel's dream of setting up a team-building business. What's in it for you? Um, I don't know at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and Mel is under no illusions. The business is important. And, you know, in reality, Ali's got to live here and she doesn't really want to come down here. To convince Ali to make this move, we've got to find the right house. And the next property may just be the one. We're staying in Monmouthshire, near the small village of Newcastle. In this area, the land is flatter, making it more suitable for Mel's team-building courses. And I'm pleased as punch to be showing Ali a barn conversion. On the market for 575000 I think it could work for them both. Yeah, it looks great. Looks really good. Be interesting what the land looks like. Mm -hmm. You don't care about the house, really, do you, Mel? I care greatly about the house. <laughs> he cares greatly about what his good lady thinks about the house. <laughs> Ali's more important in terms of the house. First impressions, this is my favourite so far in terms of oh. looks and approach and things. Mm -hmm. The main focus of this conversion is the breathtaking central living room and the use of natural materials throughout the property. The space has been broken up into five bedrooms, but there's plenty of scope for rearrangement, which could really help the layout and add value. Outside, there's five acres of flat pasture land, which is perfect for Mel, plus an agricultural barn, which is ripe for conversion. There's plenty to get excited about here. That's got the wow factor. <laughs> I like this. It's good, isn't it? This is great. They're not making the most of what is a really spectacular yeah. room. It needs to be yeah. completely vaulted. But that, yeah. that is a fairly useless room, and all of this could come down. So you enjoy the double height right through to the fireplace. Now, what you've got here is front door where we came in, laundry room, downstairs loo, and a kitchen. Not huge, coming through. There's no reason for not knocking down this at that level and opening this up. Yeah. So this room would go the whole way down to that door there. Yeah. The layout is just begging for improvement, but are they both up to it? We could turn it into my dream house. Yeah. But I don't know about you. What do you mean? Well, would it become your dream house? Well, I still like it, so Good. I haven't gone off it just yet. Great. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. She seems to be sacrificing so much more than him. It's touching that he wants the right house for her. But to be honest, I feel that even if it wasn't the right house for her, he'd still move here. And after just one look at the barn, Mel may need no more convincing about this place. Now you've got five acres in total together with this um, barn. This is absolutely perfect. I would raise the walls up, um, enclose them. I can maybe put some mezzanine flooring in so you've got two, two stories of activities. Mel's excitement about the barn is understandable. 
Although there are plenty of initiatives to encourage new businesses into the countryside, planning permission for new structures can still be difficult. It's much easier to get change of use. Mel's fired up about this place, but is Ali still keen? Right, so how does this come on the scale of, of properties previously seen? It's my favourite so far. And Mel, <laughs> you? It's the most ideal. Mel's almost moved in, but as for Ali, hmm, I'm not convinced that she's fallen for this place. It's time to up the ante for our last property. We're hopping over the border to the outskirts of the village of Much Markle. This 200-year-old house is huge and comes with a whopping ten and a half acres of land, more than double anything else we've seen. It's been extended a couple of times, so is isn't the picture postcard country house, but it's on the market for 595 and is fantastic value for money. This is another house that's not a looker, OK? We're not blind to that. <laughs> Ali, you're looking horrified. <laughs> if we'd driven up ourselves, we'd have just like, right, OK, let's go. <laughs> but the actual approach here was fine. Fine doesn't cut it, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> that's as good as you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> that's you've been told. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ten and a half acres, surely that floats your boat, Oh, well? absolutely, it does at the moment. <laughs> but I need to see it first. This is a substantial family home with buckets of potential, and it's ripe for redecoration. With five bedrooms and four reception rooms, it just needs a lick of paint. And creating a fresh, modern interior would certainly add value. Now, what we've got here is a really good and generous master bedroom suite. Bathroom, cupboard space, and then look at this. That is lovely. There are 10 acres surrounding the house and plenty of flat areas for Mel's leadership training courses. His head is bound to be turned. Now, right on cue, there's a separate entrance to the land. So your clients come in this way, they don't even see the house. Cool. Yeah? And the main usable land is in these two paddocks, one here and one across the other side of the house. The key thing for me is you've got enough space to do whatever it is that, that, that you need to do. Plenty. But of course, Ali needs to like the house. She does. And the reaction wasn't positive at all. Um, the look on her face said it all, actually. Yeah. The look on the face said it all. And I think Kirsty's got a really tough job trying to convince Ali that's the right place for her. But back at the house, Ali's being remarkably realistic. Boils down to Mel finding the right land and yeah. then combining, it's almost like the house is secondary in terms of before I can get involved in do we really like the house now sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to compromise somewhere because really it's all about the business and it's about Mel fulfilling his dream with the business. And like you say, this can be pretty up. It's yeah. not a chalet bungalow. No. Um, got great views. They can't hear the road. So, yeah, I think so, maybe. Yeah. I think so, maybe. Yes. Yeah, it's difficult. It's diff it I mean, it's difficult. difficult. It's, it's someone else's dream, and one always has that sense of how far can I personally compromise the rest of my life yeah. in order to make that person happy. Yeah. I know, I can tell you're excited, aren't you? No, not totally. Oh, okay. Halfway. We could have a stalemate here, two people each waiting for the other to make the first move. I've no idea what's going on at the moment. No, nor have I. No idea, except I know one thing. She's making huge sacrifices, and I'm still saying what's in it for her. Him. It's about relationships, compromise, it's working together. That's true love. Yeah, that's what love is. It's what people do for each other. OK, maybe Phil's right, but someone's got to take the lead. So what's it to be? Kirsty and I are a bit anxious about this one. Hasn't grabbed either of us. Right but we're trying to work it around in our heads because of the land and, like you say, it's a good-sized house. There's something missing in the heart. It's OK, just... fine. That's fine. If something's missing, don't push it. But these two really need to talk it all through. As far as they're concerned, there are still three properties in the mix. Decisions have to be made. In the morning, the weather's rolled in, and I, for one, wouldn't be surprised if Ali's changed her mind. I hope it's blown some of the fog away, because yesterday we left you thinking of three properties. I think we're just going to look view one again, and that's the barn. OK. We'll just go to the barn. Well, how about we um, get a builder... Yeah. ..and uh, see what they make of the barn and what, what you could do with it. Brilliant. So, it's back to the barn. On the market for £575,000, this is the one property where they were both in agreement. But they're only interested as long as the alterations can be done on budget. Time to get the builders in. Now, Keith, this is this is the kind of impact room. At the Wow Factory yeah. originally. 
So structurally, there's not a problem in, in moving that back, say, three metres. We should be able to do that. Mel and Ali also want to create a large kitchen diner and master bedroom suite. The costs are mounting. I don't think you're going to get any change out of a figure of between twenty to 25,000 plus right. VAT. Okay. Um, and it may well be a little bit more than that. With the costs in, are these two any closer to making a decision? It's not a definite no, I'm just still working my head around it. Well, it's got the right feel for you. I mean, I can imagine this summer it's lovely because you have all the doors open and stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you ever get summers. You still look mystified. <laughs> We're still undecided. OK, well, that's fine. <laughs> that's Don't fine. apologise, it's your big decision. Do you want to go and have a drink and talk it over? That Classic. sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Yeah. OK. Back in the warmth, I've got my own property theory for Mel and Ali. The push me pull you theory is that basically no house has got 100% pull. Buckingham Palace hasn't got 100% pull. You need push. Now, Mel's push is following the dream. Although you want to help Mel to pursue his dream, you don't have as much push as he does. Yeah. Therefore, you need a house with more pull. And that's the problem here, is that I wonder if we're always going to struggle to find the house with enough pull, given the other criteria. Would you like to make an offer? I would not want to pay more than 495 for the house. 495 I'm not convinced that Ali's lying in bed at night imagining what she'd do to that house. I can actually imagine us in the house. Yes, I can. But do you want to live there? I could be persuaded at 495. I don't think I would be at 575. I think it would be a, a fairly good compromise. Um, and I'd put an offer in just to see whether they'd go for it. Well, there's no um, mobile reception here, but there was a phone box outside, so... <laughs> Why don't I you, uh, uh, go and put a call You in? just want to do your Superman <laughs> stuff. You know, <laughs> twirling around in the telephone. Well, it would be it Superman if I buy for four nine five. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give it a go. Not quite sure how I managed to be the one making the offer of the century, but it's all in the presentation. Hi, Phil. It's Phil Spencer. Basically, uh, I've got an offer of 495000 for you. Um, but I, I would stress that that is a best and final offer, uh, that that is as far as they would go with that property, I'm afraid. Best of luck, Phil. Hope to speak to you in a bit. Cheers. Bye. Hiya. Hiya. Yeah. Well, I got hold of him. Yeah, Had a good and... chat. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's going to get hold of the, uh, the vendor now. Mm hmm He doesn't expect it to be accepted, I'm afraid. Um but he's going to make as good a case as, as possible. But, as we expected, the offer on the house is turned down. If you're buying a house with another person, the key to success is going to be compromise. It's all very well following your dreams, but you have to be certain they're not somebody else's nightmare. Come on, babies. Come on, girls. Come on. Next week is our oddest mission yet. We're reuniting Noah's Ark. Rebecca's chomping at the bit for a family home, while husband Joe's main priority is land for his camels. One of them is bound to get the hump. How are we doing here? I don't like it. He doesn't give a monkeys how big the house is. It's camels all the way. <laughs> <laughs>